What's happening? What up? Here we are again. It's Valentine's Day. It is Valentine's Day. Man. Heart day. Snowiest day of the year. Oh, wait. Usually. Yeah. Normally. More yeah. moist than anything. Uh, there is moisture. How about that? Yeah. Precip, no cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what we're still going to do? We're still going to talk winter with Swinter. Right here from the Swinter Group World Headquarters in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Ken Bogeman, Zach Frame, and Brent Reader. That's it. That's the one. Brent Reader, Brent Reader, is over there, ready to roll. <laughs> Man, it's going to be a thing for at least today. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> longer. Yep. No, it's going to die. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill that in its sleep. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. You know what we're going to talk about today? What? You, well, you know what we're going to talk about. Oh, okay. You want me to tell you anyway? Yeah, go ahead. It's about, about how much is too much customer contact. So the questions we're answering here is, you know, how do you approach the person? Right. Right. And then the fine line between annoying and effective. Yeah. So two points. There's definitely a line there. But it's different for every person. It sure is. Yep. And you often cross it before you know it. Yeah. Well, and that's bizarre. So that's that's why those two questions are so good together. Because you don't know where that line is until they tell you. Or you just kind of figure it out. <laughs> and a lot of that's based on how you approach them. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, like I delete any email from any person I don't know. Especially if it if it's from somebody I don't know, it's like, hey, Ken, wanted to reach out and talk about, I'm done. I don't even care. Like, it could be, yeah. hey, Ken, want to reach out and talk about your winning lottery ticket or whatever. I, uh, gone immediately? Gone. Hmm. Gone. I, like, I have zero tolerance for junk email. Can't do it. Hmm. Want nothing to do with it. And you know what else I'm, I'm, I'm also pretty pretty upset by? The people that call and are like, yeah, is Ken around? And, you know, the receptionist, you know, here will be like, Sure. Can I tell them who's calling? Oh, yeah, this is Bob. Hi, Bob. What are you calling about? Like, like they do a pretty good job of gatekeeping. And those slimy-ass salesmen that are like, oh, yeah, I was talking to them last week about something or other and just following up on it. And then they call back and they're like, yeah, you got Bob here who was talking about something last week. I'm like, no, I wasn't. I don't even know. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know Bob. And then, like, boom, you're, auto, you're automatically off the list. Sometimes I'll take the call just to know who you are so I can put it in our CRM and say don't ever talk to these people again. Wow. I know. That's awfully hard considering you're one of those guys. <laughs> exactly. Well, you do that same thing. <laughs> so, well, I don't do the slimy thing, but okay. But, what? I, like, I'll try to call. He doesn't do the slimy thing, but he does walk in the back door and just start asking random people <laughs> who to talk to. Well, because, so here's the thing. So so here's the deal. So, like, you get, you get that email that you delete, and you get that phone call that you delete, Right, but those are two hits yeah. where they've seen your name, and that's easy enough. So, so for me, I just delete that stuff without even thinking about it. Like, I do not get emotionally involved because they're just trying to do their job. I get it; that's fine. Mm-hmm. Right now, somebody shows up here and says, "Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I left a, you know, I left a voicemail, sent an email, and I don't want to bother him. But if you wouldn't mind dropping off the card, let him know that I dropped by. That'd be great." Now, those people, I'll, I call back. Hmm. Now, I, I don't want to, like, stop what I'm doing to talk to him, but if somebody swings by and, and drops off a card, says, I just want him to know that I, you know, that I want, I'd, I'd like to talk to him, give me a buzz when it's, you know, convenient for him, that person I'll call back because you made the effort to actually come here. And you left without trying to bother me. That's the ticket. That's the is key. Is that the line between annoying and effective? For me, it is. I can think of one account I got that way. Was it a good one? Yeah, it was a really good one. See? But one. Yeah. <laughs> no? yeah. Well, so, but if you think and that about came it, down to more of timing that he was actively ticked at his current vendor. And I just happened to walk in that day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that that's, I mean, for, for me, if you're trying to sell to me, that's going to be the best way to do it because you're, you're, I think that the message that that shows is I care about you. I want your business, but I also respect your time and I don't want to bother you. So here's my card, have at it. Or the, the same similar scenario is to send something in the mail. So an actual, you know, United States Postal Service, you know, throw together, you know, a, a you know, brochure and a letter and a whatever and then a handwritten note of some kind and then send that in the mail. It shows it shows that personal connection because I I particularly think that in the service business, way too much of the service business these days is 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 overly automated. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you wind up with, you know, some somebody that doesn't really care what's going on and they're just they've hired a call center to, to you know, make, you know, 10 billion phone calls. And, the you know, if they can get a couple idiots to call them back, then they'll take their money. Right. But at the same time, you know, I, I think that the um, um, the finesse and and 
personal touch of an actual account manager is something that's kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. I can see that. Yeah. And, you know, we get that feedback from our customers too, that, you know, Hey, it's nice having somebody that cares, you know, like after a storm, call them. Hey, I just wanted to touch base. How did things go? Yeah. And you know what? More often than not, you're going to get compliments. And you're not going to get them any other way. Correct. Most of the time. Correct. Well, in a time. Yeah. Because, oh, oh, look, my, my snow guy did his job. Neat. Yeah. That's what I'm paying you for. Right. Yeah. That's what the money is for. Anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's the thing. Is, 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 is But when you call and you touch base, hi, how are you? How do you do? That's good. That right. building the relationship thing. Yeah. So, you know, I think that there's different levels of annoying. Them. I mean, how about you? Somebody's trying to sell to you. What I mean, what would you appreciate and why? The only people that try to sell to me are the people that show up to my house. Don't ever come to my castle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Such so things don't go to. So don't stalk your customers. Don't ever come to my castle. <clears throat> All right. The last guy almost got a pit bull. Oh, is that the dudes in the backyard? Uh, no, no, that was a that was a robbery or oh. something. I was getting staked out or something. <laughs> the last solicitor to the show up to my door. I I could barely hold the dog back. You should. I don't see many of the, many solicitors anymore. I get. Uh, charter all the or Spectrum every time now because I canceled them and went to AT and T. So now I get Spectrum at my door every that, couple months. Eventually, I'll have that option. AT and T is awesome. Is that Uverse? No, oh. it, it's like it's a fiber twice the speed. Oh wow, of Charter. Yeah, well, that's cool. It's like three times what we have at the office. That's pretty quick. It's super quick. Like I mean, our internet here's pretty fast. Yeah, I think it, we got three download meg. speed. Upload speed is terrible. Oh. Okay. It, it, it's just how Spectrum is. Oh. Anyways, that's a side note. Yeah, that's a whole. Anyway, um, yeah, as far as, I mean, being personable is a big thing. I don't want to have a hint of sleazy salesman come out of you while you're talking to me. Yeah. You know? So what are hints of sleazy salesperson? Well, the. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got one. I, oh, yeah. Just talk to your neighbor up the street. You know, that and, one And dropping sucks. a name. And I'm like, oh, really? Who is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Christy, right up the street. There is no Christy up the street. And they well, just, evident, and just evidently names. Bob up the street's got something going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they just start making stuff up. And it's like, you you came to my house on a hoverboard. Yeah. They don't even walk anymore. Wait, what? Yeah. They're going up and down these subdivisions on hoverboards. Segways and stuff. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, if we weren't all like 100% B2B, we would have to invest in a fleet of segways. And then, and then they don't even have any literature they can leave you with, like a business card or anything. They're just trying to get your information so someone can follow up. Oh, there's the... Do you have a card? Can you leave me a card? I'm really busy right now. I'm not the flyer boy. I'm here to talk to you. What? Yeah, that was a, that was a response. Wow, that's a little rough. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are probably listening to this that do driveways. So, I mean, this oh, is yeah, this tons. is really good. There's probably a lot of door knockers actually. Yeah. So, okay. So, what you're saying is, don't show up on a hoverboard and say that I can't leave you any information. I think there's actually a program you can use, like I think it's like called Foursquare or something like that. That when you have a customer here, it helps you create an advertising list based off that that hits all the properties right next to it, and you can legitimately say, "Hey, we're doing your neighbor across the street," and which they can verify, and helps you kind of branch out from that using one sale trying to turn it into three or four. No, oh, okay. If you're going to do residential type properties, that well, that would be a really good. Yeah, and if you're and if you're in the snow business and you're thinking about picking up, you know, and doing residential work like driveways, I mean, you 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 cannot get one driveway here and then you know one driveway no. a few miles away and then one driveway over there. I mean, you the only way to make to to maximize your profitability on residential work is to make sure that you your work is very tight and very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, while we despise that type of work, there are a lot of companies making a ton of money on driveways. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, super. Yeah. Like it is impressive the amount of money they spend to service these things. Yeah, there's even I even know a few guys here in St. Louis that are doing that, and I I don't get it. Yeah, well, I mean, we're just we're just not geared for that. I mean, our our yeah. operation is is geared for you know large commercial. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's I mean, and we we call that you know hurting uh, actually uh, we, hurting mice and elephants. So is an old phrase. So, you know, the, the elephants, you know, trample the mice and the mice scare the elephants and it just gets bad. You got yeah. a bunch of gooey little bloody mice on the ground. Ugh. Yeah. It's bad. I, I actually didn't follow that, but that's okay. So hurting mice and elephants. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> We're good. I didn't, fine. I didn't need an explanation. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. So, okay. So, all right. So then there's that fine line between annoying and effective. Yeah. Right. So let's be honest. If you're in sales, You've had somebody tell you to stop calling. Yeah. It's happened. At least once. At yeah. least once. There, there, there's there's always that one. Yeah. So, you know, 
That's that's that that's a lesson learned. That's when you've gone too far. Right. Yeah. But you know, I mean, I think that something with snow though is that you have to be you have to let your customers know that there's a time limit on their decision making. You know, they can't wait and call you when there's snow in the forecast and expect you to just magically show up and do a good job. There's no chance, right? The biggest thing I've adopted is that when you do get a hold of them, they say, "Yeah, I'm, I don't have time to talk about it right now." Get get a basically an approval from them of when you can reach back out. Yeah, because if they just leave it, I'm not ready yet, but I do want to talk, or, or they have some type of communication with you. Always get a when would be a good time for me to follow up. Yeah. Now they've given you permission to follow up. Now you're not overdoing it, mm-hmm. and you have a reason. Hey, I'm just following up from our last conversation, which is true. Yeah. And instead of just going, hey, you told me to follow up. It's been five minutes. Here I am following up again. <laughs> yeah. We oh, yeah, talked no, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is is that that so from the customer's perspective, so you call me and we're talking and I said, man, I do want to talk to you. I just don't have time right now. And, the, and you then say, okay, well, how about I give you a buzz back in three weeks? Yeah, man, that sounds great. And then you call back and say, yeah, I spoke to you a few weeks ago. You, know, you asked me to call you three weeks from then. Well, here we are. You know, it, as the buyer, I'm going to think, wow. Somebody actually took a note and then did what they said they were going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Like, like it happens. It's yeah. rare, but it happens. And I mean, that's, I think that's a big deal too. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely doing what you say you're going to do is huge. Yeah. Huge, huge. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yep. Huge. Yep. And so, you know, you gotta, you gotta, um, not be, you know, um, over the top. Yeah. As well when, with those, you know, so don't say, oh, today's a bad day. How about I call you tomorrow? Right. Well, okay, relax, settle down. It's fine. You know, and, and then understand that the, those people that are procuring those services, they generally have a way they like to do it. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think gets forgotten a lot, too, is that, you know, if you're doing commercial work, a lot of times a property manager will say, yeah, usually, you know, I, you know, I buy my snow in September. I buy my snow in October. Or, you know, I make my decisions in whatever time. And they've, 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 they're used to that cycle. They're used to that time frame. And so it's, we, I always get disheartened when somebody says, yeah, you know, I, I, I make my decisions usually in you know, late October, early November. Okay. Well, right away I tell them that I'm out. You know, say, Hey, I, I can't, I can't help you. That's too late in the season. Yeah. It's, you know, if, if, if you find somebody that has capacity at that time of year, why do they have the capacity? I mean, you know, some, something's probably amiss there and they're used to that. And subsequently, those are generally the same people that always have hated every one of their snow vendors. Yeah. Huh. Funny. It's thing. like picking the cheapest guy every time, not understanding why they can't get it done. Right. It's 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 100 percent. So, you know, I think that, you know, with situations like that and, you know, I try to say, OK, that's great. I don't think I'm going to be able to help you because, you know, we need time to, you know, to, you know, to get prepared, make sure we have, you know, the right equipment, the right amount of materials. I mean, we order our materials over the summer. So, I mean, so we need to kind of have a handle on what our service portfolio is. And a lot of times, you know, those property managers or property owners will look like it, like look at you like you got two heads. Like, well, I don't understand. Why would I buy my snow removal services in June? Well, because it's, the, you know, that gives us time to be prepared. Yeah. And once they understand that, then it's we've really seen a lot of success with particularly property managers that are historically used to procuring their services late, late, late in the season. As we've gotten them to move earlier and earlier in the season, not only are they super happy with their service, but they wind up now calling back and saying, hey, can we get this done? And then that also creates a little bit of a competitive advantage for you because if you're able to focus in on snow during those summer months and really get your bids in, get them in quickly and get them in accurately, some of your competitors may not have that ability because they're so stressed out trying to do their normal gig yeah. that they can't get that bid turned in on time. And so that's something where you can also differentiate yourself from your competitors that way over the summer as well that you can only do if you communicate to your customer, hey, this is what we need to do and why. I've already started for next year. Attaboy. Man, you know what it is? It's already time. Well, wow. dang. These, this 15-minute thing is just, it's just boom, it's over <laughs> fast. <laughs> So, anywho, man, appreciate you listening. Hope you all learned something. Hey, how do you get in contact with your customers? What's annoying? What's not annoying? You should tell us. And you can tell us by two ways. Two ways. You can get with us at uh, you know podcast at swintergroup.com. Or you can look us up on Twitter, Talking Winter with Swinter, at Swinter Snow Talk are the uh, two names there. One of them's bold. One of them's got a little <laughs> at in front of it. It's like at... Swinter Snow Talk. That's the one you'll type in to find us. That's it on Twitters. Looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks.
missed your cue. That's fine. It was it was only a little muted. <laughs> and then I pulled a Mr. Hanky. What do you think of that? Uh, you know, you can never be mad at Mr. Hanky. Right? Never. Okay. Yeah, I got nothing on that. What? Man, all right, you need to go home and watch some South Park. It's fine. Oh, well, that'll explain it. Yeah, probably. He's got class. I know, it's weird. That's fine. Here we are. I've never associated with classy people before. I, I, try, I tried to stick to Family Guy. Oh, well, that's pretty mind. good, too. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, too. Yeah, it was a step up. Yeah, we need to get Peter Griffin on. That'd be pretty oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a guy that does really good impressions. He's on TikTok, though. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Man, here we are talking winter with Swinter. Again, yeah, yeah. Swinner Group's World Headquarters here in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Ken Bogeman. we got Brent Reeder, Zach Frame. I know I went this way this that, that time. That screwed me up. Was, so that, was that rough? Everyone thinks we just have new people. <laughs> yeah, whole new staff. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then Nicole, as always, is over there diligently working away. Not paying attention. Not listening, nor talking on a microphone. Wow, she's really good at tuning you out. Yeah. Holy cow. It's like we're at home. <laughs> 100%. Dang, she oh, my oh, God. Oh, she does. Okay, she's got headphones in. <laughs> she has one headphone I was going to say, like, man, that was that was a little rough. That was got really good. That. No comments at all. Yeah. It's fine. It's that fine. awesome. Yeah. She's like, yeah, whatever. I need that skill. Guy doesn't ever shut up. It's fine. Man, speaking of not shutting up, you know are going to talk about today? Lunch. Lunch. Building that relationship. So, we're, we, you know. This little, you know, this little group that we got going here, right? So, like, getting past the gatekeeper, and then we talked about, you know, how much is too much customer contact. And now we're going to say, okay, made contact. Now you, you got to build that relationship. We know who it is. Yep. Target acquired. Is this when I give them the bass boat? <sighs> Bad plan. That's a really uh, so, I mean, wow. it's, no. it's theirs, but it's not theirs. You know, they have the keys. And See, it's there to use, but... See, here's the thing, man. You yeah. start you start dropping off gifts like that anymore. That, like, you used to be able to do that. Like, you used to be able to do all kinds of crap. Can't yeah. do it anymore. Life was good. Life was good. Yeah. Can't do it anymore. Can't do gifts no more? Not really. I mean, a lot of places will say, no, they have a no gift policy. Yeah. And even if you try to take them to lunch, like, there's a dollar limit that you can spend. I've had customers that, oh, yeah. that I can't even buy them lunch. We can go to lunch together, but they have to get their own. Yeah. It was really nice. Weird. I was like, well, I invited. I'm confused. Yeah. And then, and then you attempt to say, well, if, if I can't buy yours, I mean. Yeah. You know I, I, you I've actually had that happen, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they picked up mine. I'm like, this is, I feel awkward now. <laughs> this <laughs> isn't awesome. how this is supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, going out to lunch is, is sometimes a little tough because, you know, uh, it's. So people just sometimes don't have time. I mean, everybody's so damn overworked these days. It's it's really hard to do that. So, you know, you gotta you gotta come up with other things that you can do to 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 build that relationship, right? So, so something that might be a little easier for socially awkward salespeople. Well, maybe wrap your head around that. Maybe or or like <laughs> like like introverted salespeople. <laughs> introverted salespeople. That's me. I hate people. That you are not introverted, dude. So I can yeah. be I can be extroverted. And then, like, after, like, if I'm, like, have to go talk at something or something like that, and then there's, like, a bunch of people around, I generally go hide in a hole for a couple of days. I'm oh, just, yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> get me away from people. <laughs> yeah, it's a little rough. But it's fine. But it's fine. So, <clears throat> so yeah. So, like, so so things other than going out to lunch on, on what we can do. And what, something that, that I think has worked really well for me in the past is facility tours. People love to show you around their stuff. Show me your tings. <sighs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> took me a second. Burt Reader over there is like, what? <laughs> I'm trying to decide which direction this is going. Yeah, I know. No, so like, so, you know, so, hey, you know, you know so give him a call and say, working on your snow plan. I'm gonna, I, I want to swing by and take a look at X, Y, Z. You going to be around? Yeah, sure. You know, and, and so maybe that's, I got to mark storm drains or I got to, I want to, you know, count dock doors or count car corrals or I want to, I mean, come up with some reason to swing by the property yeah. and then ask if they're going to be around. Hey, can I meet you? No. Oh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Okay, great. You know, and see if they'll see if they'll come out and do a do another tour with you. I mean, you don't want to be you don't want to come off like you know the the last time you were there you wasted their time, right? But you know, come up with some reason why you want to be there. Hey, I would like to meet you and talk about X Y Z, or hey, I would like to meet you and you know and look at this, or hey, I want to show you something. You know, figure out some some reason to get together on site is something that uh, that people are generally a little more likely to. If they're not going to come meet you for lunch, they may come meet you at the property for something. That's true. Yeah, you know. Yep. Always fun. Can be. It can be. <laughs> what? He looks Nothing? enthused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something else is um, uh, industry groups. So your, you know, BOMA, IFMA, IRAM, 
kind of things. You know, there's, 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 there's going to be in, in your town, there's going to be a group somewhere that will tell you, you know, Hey, this is, you know, here's, here's a group of industry professionals that you can come and, you know, get involved with. That's a really good way to build relationships with people as well. Yeah. And yeah. if nothing else for them to just see you around. Yes. hundred percent. See your company name. See Staying in front of them is probably the most important thing. Yep. Yep. Oh, you know what? You can, you can see us. Oh, on Twitter. Not like that over though. there. Well, not like that. No. <laughs> you know what? You really can't actually not like it. You can't see us. You can't see us at all. You can see, you can see, you can see, well, my truck. That's a good truck. I do like my truck. What's our small circle picture? My truck and the logo. They're both two trucks. They're both trucks. Same, po- probably the same photo. No, they're different photos. Same snowstorm though. Nice. Yeah, it was kind of cool. But anyway, the last no, good one we had on Twitter, talking winter with Twitter at Swinter Snow Talk, which if you can drop us a, is it a like or a follow? It's a follow. Well, you follow right. the account and you like the tweets. Yeah. So if you, so our 50th follower is going to get a, a, a Snowcaster 30 SNC. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Super nice. Should have mentioned that the last couple is that, episodes. Is that 30 inches wide? It is 36 inches wide. I think With wheels. With wheels. 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 Super nice, man. And if you push it, it's like cool flip. Yeah. See, I try to work a cool flip in there and it, wasn't it just it didn't now i just want pie pie yeah it's a family guy reference man i was trying to relate to brent over there oh yeah i i have a horrible memory so (laughs) nice all right yeah all right so so now that you know 75 people have you know followed our twitter account we can move on yeah probably not no it's fine 50th person gets a snowcaster it's gonna be awesome really good yeah and they could take that snowcaster and they could call, call their customers and say hey i've got this really cool shovel it's not even a shovel. It's a plow that you work with your arms yeah, push, and your legs. Your That's right. It's for really people in really good shape or want to be in really good shape. I'm not in really good shape, and I use that thing just fine. There you go. I'm in worse shape, and I don't use it at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why. But, yeah, but no, you know, and then you can take something cool and say, hey, I've got this really cool thing. I'm going to swing by and show it to you. Right. Maybe they'll listen to you. Maybe they won't. You know, come up with something to do. So, you know, something we've talked about for years. We've never actually done it, but I really want to is I want to – I want to rent like a like a fancy hall kind of place, right? Yeah. Have a band, food, hors d'oeuvres, drinks, and I want it to be the snowball. <laughs> and we invite customers and like managers and stuff and like and like come together and <laughs> it'll be the snowball. It'd be fancy. Like 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 get dressed up, go to it kind of thing. Oh, like dress so up. Are they gonna have like like a waiters coming around with those fancy trays with snowballs on the tray? Full of vodka. Oh my god, can you do that? I'm sure you can. Okay, I might eat a snowball if it was full of vodka. Figuring it out. There it is. There, oh, wait, you know what? And when you make it up, call your customer. Hey, hey I've <laughs> got this snowball full of vodka. We should get together. Right? Right. Right. So I might know. work with my customers. <laughs> this is fair. So anyway, so so you know, key there being is figure out you know something to talk about with them. It doesn't necessarily have to be snow related. I mean, it could be anything. Just you know, figure out figure out a reason to call. Hey, we just hired somebody. I want you to let you know. Hey, we just bought this piece of equipment. Thought I'd let you know. Hey, this, hey, that, whatever. I mean, those are all good things to do. Um, you know, another thing is, is you know, I mean, you know, is just doing a drop-in. Yeah. Hey, I was in the neighborhood. that I come by and say, hey, I don't want anything. How are you? Just got a fresh cut. What do you think? That's right. You know? Trimmed up. Got a new Cologne on. Nice. Cologna. Yep. That's that's Cologne. Brent, we were, uh, I'm aware of what that it was, is. It was a joke. Yeah. Because we're really funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blowing my mind. There it is. <laughs> nice. So, okay. So, lunches we covered, drop ins we covered. Yep. Yep. Any other ideas? Come on, guys, throw them out. What do you got? Cool tips and tricks. Golf. Golf. Golf is yeah. I've heard golf is a thing. It was awesome. I was when I was working in Milwaukee. I had a uh, a property manager that I was like, hey, we gotta go golfing. And this guy pops back. He's like, are you kidding me? Unless I could shoot that little white ball with a 12 gauge, I ain't getting on a golf course. That's nuts. Oh my God. And I said, Oh no. And I said, You know what? I think we can make that happen. He's like, What? And I said, You got a, <laughs> you got a skeet or trap range or something close? I'll bring the clubs. We'll figure it out. <laughs> laughed his, laughed hysterically. And then we never did it. Nice. That's actually letdown. something I want to do. I want to have one guy set up to, you know, chip some golf balls in the air. And the next person's set up to blast it out of the air. See, I think that'd be awesome. That'd I be actually fun. have a whole bunch of golf balls in my truck for that very reason. Yeah. That's why they're in there? That's why they're in there. They've been in there what? for a long time. Yeah, and you know what? He found them all. See, when I go play golf, I don't try to win the game. I just I just cruise around looking for my ball. Oh, no, that was see. that was deer hunting. Found them in the woods. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of golf balls in and there. And they're all still in my truck since that day. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, it's like, hey, look, here's another one. 
<laughs> and another one. Yep. Like to the point where like you find enough of them, you're like, you know, maybe I ought to wear a hard hat back here. <laughs> yeah, that made no sense. Yeah. I mean, middle of nowhere, golf balls everywhere. Yep. So whatever. Yep. Golf is good. You know, um, you know, and try to find common interests. Yeah. You know, if, say. if you can. So like when you're in their office, um, you know, a good thing is, you know, spend some time looking around the walls, you know, look at the pictures that are on the wall and look for, look for things that become relatable. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. if you look around the walls and you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, and you got, like I'm looking around the walls in here, I got, you know, a bunch of family stuff up here, right? Got my kid pictures of my kids up there. Okay, cool. So, you know, you probably don't want to say, hey, how about I hang out with your kids sometime? Because <laughs> that would be awkward, right? I, I would have thought that was obvious, but. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. No bueno. No bueno, no. But what well, you can I mean, is, what? In the political world, that's okay. Oh, dude. Our leadership's careful. Ah, no, no, politically correct. Nope, nope, nope. Stay out of it. Back her down, Bert. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But yeah. the good thing is when people come in your office, they look at you and directly over your shoulder is your solo flight certificate. That's true, it is. A lot of people know way too much about aviation. A lot of people know too much about it? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I, I don't think you can know too much about it. Yeah. No. Non-pilots can, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I think, I think, think for the people flying the thing, the more they know, the better. Because yeah, that's the, for sure. They're Google smart? Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I saw a documentary one time about, no. Show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Leonard Skinner's plane got shot down by the Russians. Oh, did it? No. Oh, okay. How about that balloon? The balloon. Man, here, <laughs> yeah, the balloon is something else. You know what? You could call your customers and say, hey, would you like to buy protection from Chinese spy balloons? <laughs> did you see that balloon the other day? Check this out. I thought we right. were going to offer balloon rides. No. I did see a meme that was like the the jet chasing the balloon or whatever, and then it zoomed in on the balloon. It was Joe Dirt in that scene when he was... <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it was I've awesome. That. It was really good. Joe Dierte. <laughs> Dirty Joe Dirt. Yep. yep. I love that movie. That's yeah, a good one. Yeah. Uh, what? I'm thinking about common interest I have with my customers now. Thanks. Yeah. You got any? No. None? Uh, a few, but. Oh, I got one. Yeah. You all hate snow removal. No. I mean, I guess you don't hate it. We don't hate it. You're certainly not passionate about it. Who ain't? Nobody. That's what I'm saying. None of your customers are going to be passionate about snow removal. No, there's not. My customers will for sure. hundred percent. Well, that's true. My particular customers. Okay, that's they funny. like running equipment and throwing plows and slinging salt and hitting car. I mean, <laughs> mailboxes. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Well, find find those common interests. You know, do you know? Assuming you can get into the office, look around because there's there's going to be a bunch of really good information there, and and do the best you can to be to realize that people want to be they want to like you, but they don't want to be your best friend. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's, that's really the thing is you have to build a, you have to build a relationship with your customers that enables you to know uh, some about them. They know some about you, but it's not like you guys are going to hang out every Saturday and barbecue. Right. You know, I mean, they have to like you, but they don't, you know, but they don't want to be, you know, your BFFs. Right. Yeah. It does pay to find something like I had a customer recently that had made a personal modification to a plow controller. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. What? Picture a Western, you know, p- pistol grip yeah. controller. And then they had a Snow X spreader, but they were using straight blades. So they had extra buttons on their controller. They turned those into the controls for the spreader. Wow. That takes some stuff. It was genius. That is genius. It was, it was simple in function. I don't know how they pulled it off. And I was I like, well, no how do you keep from bumping that? And he's like, oh, I put a power switch right on the top. I'm like, I don't get it. Why is nobody else doing this? That's amazing. It was awesome. Hey, Douglas Dynamics, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, we, um, we can we can hook you up with the guy that put that together. Right. Yeah, if if it functioned, it was ama- it was awesome. Wow, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm, Man, just, so. I'm all about thinking about how that would work now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got I'm you all get, engineer brain. I'll get you hooked up with the guy. Oh, good. And when you come up with it, you know what you can do call your customers and be like hey man check this out look at my plow controller i got this really really cool thing going on right it's a kick-ass plow controller <laughs> <laughs> yeah man here we are swinner group talking winner with swinner on the twitters at swinner snow talk or podcast at swinnergroup.com either way we'd love to hear from you uh go ahead and give us a follow on twitter if you do we'll um and uh we'll get you get you registered there to maybe send you a snowcaster It'd be kind of cool so Sweet. anyway 
Thanks for listening. We'll uh, we'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.